time we will do Abathur with his Brutalisks, which are massive units. I will go with this time without a prestige, and my masteries will be 22 points of toxicness because that's the amount you need to destroy most of the units, and the uh, remaining will be a man healing so I can survive for longer. Then I'll go with Symbiote Ability Improvement because these are about the Brutalisks and their Symbiotes. And finally, 5 points of Toxicness charges just so they will spot a bit more in the early game. That's where I really need them. The rest will be on uh, Structure Morph and Evolution Rate. So they will build faster. So it'll, it will once again be a missed opportunities with Maguro Map to make things go uh, with the exact enemy composition every time. Thank you to Notorious Thief for supporting me in the mobilization wave tier. And Darth, Karis Band, Lucinus Impudinus, and Shadow Archon, who are supporting me in the Pulse Cat and Tier. And thank you to all my supporters on Patreon. So this was in a previous patch, so that doesn't affect anything, but just something to, you might want to know. Early game, once again, will be all about baiting enemies into my Toxic Nests, so that they will be giving me more biomass for my Brutalisk. So, early game, want to send a drone down here, and then burrow it, as soon as the stalker starts shooting, and by this time your roach war should be starting. And then four toxic nests in this exact location against Protoss. I can do this because I know the, I know the enemy is Protoss. One toxic nest here, two here, while the spine crawler is starting. Well, you want to start this one, just one box in front of the wall, and this one on the on the uh, round or the the diagonal box thing. Okay, so I move my... Oh, by the way, make sure your toxic nests are off auto-detonate so that you can wait for the optimal position or the optimal timing before detonating all these toxic nests manually. So I make another overlord while I draw these guys in. I'll be going one base, by the way, so you can see, yeah. So that's the magic of manually detonating your toxic nests. Again, uh, right-click the detonate on these toxic nests so that you can manually detonate, detonate them and then wait for the enemy oh one more thing that uh lila likes to do is to put put down toxic nests in this uh in the enemy base to aggro all of these guys to the roach that to the roach or the spine crawler that is let that is luring them and i think you just attack buildings and manually detonate once again this time I have Toxic Nests on the attack pathing of the uh, attack wave while I'm getting gas. I have another Roach waiting by the way, if you saw it in my main base for a moment or a couple seconds. Lure these guys in, I wait for the Stalker to be in range before I circle back with the Zealots and once again detonate at the exact location or at the exact time that they are both or all standing in that spot. So once again, I do the Toxic Nest bait here to make them follow. And you can see it is super effective in drawing out all those enemies. Didn't quite get that Immortal, which is unfortunate, but it did still get damaged by the Toxic Nest, so it will still give extra biomass. So that is all good, I think. I did get a Lair, and I'm getting an Infestation Pit because... I will go for Vipers here to help my Brutalisk survive. One thing I didn't do in my previous run. In my previous one, it was just Toxic Nests and Brutalisks. This time, I'll try to actually help my Brutalisk survive by adding Vipers. Adding more Toxic Nests along the path of the attack wave and adding Evolution Chambers because I have nothing else to do with my gas, to be honest. And I will also stay on one base because I really need the extra base. My most important resource this game is biomass. A couple minerals, a couple gas. I detail my Brutalisk to... I don't actually know where I detail... Oh wait! Over here. Yeah, waiting for the first wave. Once again, baiting these guys, so you see circling back until everything is over that one toxic nest before detonating it. Getting upgrades. You can see the production tab Probably shouldn't have it on there even. After I get to 33, I should probably turn it off. Wait for the enemies to walk over the toxinus, then manually detonate. That's my second Brutalisk. Oh wait, actually, I didn't use Evolution Master. I'm an idiot. 
I apologize for when I earlier said that I used Evolution Master Prestige. I actually used the Limitless because obviously I would need more than three Brutalisks. Obviously. Otherwise, I would have had three Brutalisks already. But doesn't matter. I'm still... Well, I guess it does matter, but... In this game in particular, it doesn't matter. It matters... In the selection screen, but not in the game itself. I guess it does matter if I did use Evolution Master, I would be limited to 3, and I would have 3 by now, and I would, and I would need other units. Meanwhile, I'm cleaning out this area, trying to get a full clear as early as I can, so I can focus more on biomass collection, throwing down these toxicness. You can see I did use a mend to keep that toxicness alive, and it is paying dividends via these dudes walking into it. Baiting more guys to here. Come on, don't be shy. Don't be shy. You see the immortal ones are the immortals walking into that toxic nest which I saved and once again paying off. You can see how slow the limitless is. When you're playing in a mutation, I don't actually recommend the limitless normally. There are certain mutations where it is a better choice, but there aren't a lot of them. And it takes you so long to get your ultimate evolutions. I'm already 7 minutes into the game with the most optimal situation for getting biomass, and I still only just now got my third. Fourth will soon be on the way after I start plus 3 attack. Again, switch off the detonate on those toxic nests. Fourth one on the way, and the viper. My first viper is on the way. Of course, for those who are wondering how I can start those things without looking, it's called control groups. For you guys who don't use control groups, you should try them. They're awesome. And for those who do use control groups, I apologize <laughs> because I have to cater to everyone, including those who are Relatively new to the game. Plus three attack has started. You start plus three armor. So you have enough money for it. That's the nasty thing about being on one base. Getting that biomass. Use the mend to keep my stuff alive. That will give me my fourth brutalisk, which is awesome. You want to switch off the auto cast of Leviathan on this Viper so that it doesn't actually become a, a, a Leviathan. You want Vipers here for the Disabling Cloud to help your Brutus survive. You don't want Leviathans splitting the damage away from your ultimate evolutions. So, waves on the way. Actually, let me raise the game volume a little bit. A lot. Let me raise it a lot. <laughs> you can see the Viper now has enough biomass to turn into a Leviathan. But it does not. Because I switched off the autocast. Just clearing out this area. Making this not a thing. I slowly poke into here, despite having four Brutalisks with Symbiote Mastery, I still don't want to deep tunnel straight into the enemy base because I don't want to get my stuff surrounded. It's always better to piece away the enemy bit by bit to minimize damage on your own dudes. Alright, the third armor upgrade's on the way, now I can switch to Unitab, which I guess looks bigger. Oh well, at least it'll give you more visual as to what you say actually have. The production tab doesn't really matter that much anymore because it's just one roach or one viper at a time and I'm on one base so whatever I'm producing doesn't really matter. I don't know why I did that. Oh, I know why I did that. One brutalisk, one brutalisk was behind over here collecting biomass and I just deep tunneled all of them to the front. That's why it looked like that. Deep tunneled them elsewhere. And you can see I deep tunneled them to the middle of the third set of geysers while this viper is collecting Biomass, you can deep tunnel 
using the minimap. That's what I did. Roach walking. Second Vapor is here, collecting biomass. I will try to minimize my usage of toxic nests now because I have enough brutalisks to deal all the damage. And of course, this video is about the effect effectiveness, F -f 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 effectiveness of the brutalisks. I also got myself an overseer for detection and vision. There aren't any cloaked units here, but it's just a good habit to have, getting detection. You don't want to play like, well, someone who doesn't get detection. Use mend to keep my dudes alive. Of course, uh, I apologize for the uh, over-swaying camera. This roach is getting attacked. So I use the same on cloud to keep those dudes not whacking my dudes. That High Templar miraculously got off one Psy Storm. Deleting this wave, next wave will be over here, near the center of the two harvesting bots. I smash this wave, which spawned. So now the rest of the game, you will see the rest of the game is basically disabling cloud and attack move with my Brutalisks. It's gonna be that simple. I have six Brutalisks and three Vippers. That's all I need, honestly. For a straightforward push into anything, pretty much anything, this non-mutation map has to offer. But, of course, I'll get more Brutalisks because more is more. In an RTS game, more is more. I'm just getting biomass for my third Viper. Two is great, but three is better. So I push into here, disabling Cloud, the Colossus. Abduct the Reaver so it doesn't shoot my stuff. The Reavers hit hard. It is one of the few units that I'm genuinely concerned fighting. I just pull that Colossus in using Abduct. Destroy that hybrid. Spam those disabled clouds to minimize the damage. One storm goes off out of like, I think there were two High Templar. So that's pretty good. I think I'm not, I think I'm not starting the production of Queens, am I? I'm only now getting the Queen upgrades. I will produce Queens to have a sort of healing center right around the middle of this area. I'll just have queens there, not gathering biomass, but just standing there to heal my hurt brutalisks. And push into here. Deletus Astingus. And deep tunnel straight into here so that they won't derp on, on the ramp. Okay, now, now queen production has started. You can see, yeah, two queens are on the way. That's pretty much cleaned up. I have seven Brutalisks. They can just deep tunnel anywhere. And all I have to do now is kind of wait on. Wait on the attack wave, which I, I think this prompts me to. I think this can prompt me to speed up the game a little bit. Let me wait until some more action happens. Yeah, you can see I'm just producing queens. Two queens. So I, have, so I have something to use my money on. You can see the healing center over here. The queen's just providing some mass transfuse. Sending overseers to the spawn points so I can see where they're coming from. I also set up a control group of brutalists so I can have this other one here waiting for potential probes that will rebuild the base. The nasty thing about fighting Protoss is that the AI likes to rebuild that's a lot of storms that my Brutalisks ate. The good news is they're not particularly weak to storms. Waiting for the next wave. See where it spawns. It's going to spawn here in the center. We have this other Viper flying in. A little bit late, but got there eventually. 
Although I might have, uh, I might have uh, misaimed the disabling cloud. Waiting for the next wave. Should be hitting somewhere. Okay, there's one here and another one here. So what I do is uh, I clean up this wave really fast. Two disabling clouds. Whack those guys. And deep tunnel to the other location. As soon as the first one's cleaned out. There it is. And just make those guys derp out. Apologize to the harvesting bot. Next wave's here. Just clean this out. More disabling clouds. You can see those immortals not being able to shoot. And that's just good news for my brutalisks. Time for the bots to come back. More queens on the way. Yeah, just queens chilling out here, waiting for patients. They're my nurses, waiting for patients to come in. Add more vipers. No, not more vipers. More queens and roaches, and put in, put down more disabling clouds. Next wave should be coming in right now. There should be a wave here. I clean this out. Drop a couple of disabling clouds. You can see how fast the Viper regen energy. It regen energy really fast by mass on. Now my roaches are on the way to. Well, my brutalisks rather are on the way to this spot, and I'm about to attack the bonus. So we'll see how that works. Spoiler alert: It'll work really, really well. Massive. Everything deep tunneled here. We're ready to march into this base. Drop disabling clouds. Make those guys not a thing. I pull in the vipers, or the void race rather. Built another brutalisk off there. I use disabling cloud so that the big hybrid can't attack. Finish it off. The overseer here paying dividends, being able to detect those cloaky dudes. While all this is happening, my Brutalisks are absolutely destroying this bonus. So it goes down pretty quickly. Now I can just do a frontal push at this location. Throw down disabling clouds. So I can walk in. That Colossus is very long range. That is impressively long range. So I pull it in. So, I, so its range won't matter. Pretty happy that A1 doesn't use feedback on my Vipers. That'd be pretty annoying if I got feedback or fed back. Fed back. More disabling clouds make that Colossus unable to attack. Clean out that Void Ray. Just deep tunneling. Whenever Brutus gets hurt, just deep tunnel to the hospital. Pull out Colossus in. Just use the Vipers. The Vipers are an ultimate utility tool for Brutalisk. You can see I just deep tunnel here in the center of the base so that the enemies have nowhere to run because I'm attacking them in the front and now I'm also attacking them right in the middle. So just yeah, just clean that. Earlier I wasn't able to do that because I only had like four Brutalisks. Now I had I have more like 11, 12. So I can just really do that. And yeah, there are fewer mortals here, so I'm less scared to just waltz into here. Splitting my vipers so I have disabled clouds everywhere I go. This one is in danger because it was momentarily getting focused down, but I just need tunnel and brutalisks in. And that'll be cleaned up. Next one here, I can see the spawning. Thank you to my toxic nests. I throw down disabled clouds. Make that not a thing. You can see I barely even take damage anymore. I did make a hospital of queens here, and they did use some energy. For the most part, they're just a contingency plan. Because my vipers and brutalisks are enough to dominate this area. Whack this attack wave. Make it not a thing. And throw down the sabling claw on top of it. While we, while we wait for the next wave, or rather, go into the next wave, 
already thrown down disabled clouds. So I have these three vipers in three separate locations, but I have them all in the same control group. They have they each have enough they each have enough energy to throw down a couple of disabled clouds. So I don't really need to move them around. So once uh, warping in here, throw down more disabled clouds to confuse the guys. The Archons in particular are badly affected because they are short range units but at the same time have big hitboxes so it's really difficult for them to do anything. Starting to float money a little bit here despite the fact that I'm on one base because at this point I really have everything I need. Everything I need. You can see more disabled clouds. Another Brutalisk joins the party up to 14 with 16 queens ready to heal. They're just chilling out here. In case anyone needs anything. Waiting for the attack wave. Should be spawning right now, actually. Throw down the Sabling Clouds and then deep tunnel my Brutalisks here. Fly my Viper over here. It has enough energy for two more Sabling Clouds. And then just, yeah, just use that. That was the big wave at 28 minutes and 3 seconds. Clean that out. And one more wave here. I have a Viper waiting. Disable in Cloud. And delete. This attack wave. And that is basically it. A very, very smooth run for my Brutalisks. I'm not sure if I even lost any. I don't think I even lost any at that point. So let's just fast forward to the end of the game, huh? See how domineering my ultimate illusions were. By the way, I I also used my Brutus to clean out the rocks, if you didn't see that last part. Yeah. So let's end the game. Very smooth. So let's check out the score screen. So before I actually get started on putting down these stats, you might wanna you might wanna take a look at my table. You might notice that I changed one of the lines to reflect a uh, previously requested thing. So see if you can spot it. I changed one of the, some of the numbers there. See if you can spot what I changed. For the damage output, we have 51.3% for the Brutalisks and the 41.2% is for Symbiotes, or rather. Oh wow, the, the Symbiotes did more damage than the Brutalisks themselves. That's expected. <laughs> That's actually expected anyway. So 51.3 plus 41.2, the total damage will be 92.5% for the Brutalisk. The damage taken by Harvesters, 473. Kind of high, but that is because I just let that one bot take on a little bit too much damage. The fourth set, I apologize. Full map cleared, all bots saved, of course. Now let's move on to the other score screen. And you can see here that I did in fact not lose any Brutalisks. I made 15, I lost 0. So that is 100% survival rate, and kills wise, 85%, actually just 85%. The score, the score of the symbiotes on the victory screen, or the Magur overlay, is already including the symbiotes, or the symbiotes already included in the Brutalisk. That's nice, that's nice. Okay, so that's a total of 9.25 so far. This is a pretty interesting number. So if you have a look here, notice that Kerrigan's Torask still have the highest like percentage. I find that interesting, actually. I wonder if it's just because it's the first, or people actually like Kerrigan's Torask more so than Swan Thor's, more so than Voyager's Dark Archons, more so than Karax's Colossus even. That's pretty wild. Anyway, it's up to you guys now. Do you guys like Abathur's Ultimate Evolutions, his Brutalisk specifically? If 30% of you like him, that's enough to tie Karak. So 31% of you, 31% of you have to like Abathur's Ultimate Evolutions for Abathur to take top spot in these rankings. Tomorrow, the poll will go up. You, can, you guys can vote. And I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. If you have an idea for what else you do, please leave that in the comment. I will see you guys next time.